Want to help the channel? Go to shopclownfish.com where you can check out official Clownfish TV merchandise and our brand new shop. It helps us out. Also, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash clownfish TV for more art and gaming live streams that we don't do on YouTube. We want to see you over there as well. Now let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about comics versus manga. And this is our second video on, I guess what you would call meritocracy. Uh, we posted a video earlier about Disney and rumors about how Disney is going to have to go back to working with people uh, based on their merit because mm -hmm. they're probably going to have to throw people overboard. And we're going to talk about the comic book industry and its its lack of meritocracy and compare it to manga and how uh, manga is completely kicking North Americans co comics ass on every level yep. in a country that's so much smaller than America. Yep. And a lot of it comes down to merit. It's basically the market decides which comics get published, which comics uh, continue to be published. It's cutthroat and it's... It's, it's very cutthroat. It's, you know... Uh, Hard. Yes. It's hard. Things are hard. You have to actually, when you get something that gets through, it's because they were the best. And uh, to, to be able to make it in manga in Japan, you've you've basically got to be the best of the best. And, and, and one of the best of the best, the most highest paying whatever, you know, uh, creators in manga and in anime, you know, it has been a woman. Yeah, there are several female creators that are multi-millionaires. Yep. So don't um, say women are kept out because they're not. No, and solely based on sales, solely based on merit. Uh, merit. Uh, so this I thought was funny. I had to retweet this. Uh, this is uh, the new Comics Code Authority. We've been talking a lot about the people on Twitter that mm -hmm. have been sabotaging the comic book industry and this, this mindset, uh, this Twitter cancel culture. And um, I just want to wind it back a couple of years and talk about how we got to where we're at with the American comic book market. And when you've got articles out here on comic book blogs with with titles like The Dangerous Idea of a Comics Meritocracy. The Dangerous Idea of Comics Being Done by Those Who Have Earned It or Have Proven That They Can Sell. Right. This is And this is what you know, the conversation boils down to is people creating comics that sell. And a lot of people who are, you know, uh, against the comics gate movement right now um, are like, well, you know, they're just a bunch of grifters or whatever. It's like, yes, but they're... I wish I'd look up the definition of grifter. Yeah, yeah, do you even know what a grifter is? But but they're grifters making hundreds of thousands of dollars because the market is there for what they're producing. I'm not saying they're the best comics on earth, right? Um, but... Obviously, people want their product and they they give it to them and they make hundreds of thousands of dollars. At the end of the day, they might not be the best comics on earth, but they're not you. <laughs> That's that, Am I wrong? That's what it comes down to. When you've got people that are supposed to be big name creators selling like 2,000 copies of something, it's bad. And, you know, look, manga is widely available everywhere. Everybody's reading comics in Japan. We have failed so badly at comics here in America, it's because I think we keep trying to make it this uh, niche thing. Now, graphic novels have been more successful, but even the most successful graphic novel, American produced graphic novel, is nothing, nothing compared to the Japanese manga market. And guess what? It's coming over here and they're gonna eat your lunch over here too. Mm -hmm. And these people all just handed them a lunch. They did, you basically told people there's nothing going on in American comics, so go, go read manga instead. So. You know, I want to talk about the manga sales uh, versus uh, versus the American market. And just to look how, again, Japan, a country that is a fraction of the size of the U.S., they're generating about $4 billion a year in manga sales. Okay. Very, very small. It, it was up for 18 from 17. It's, it's going up every year. This is actually, yeah, this is uh, 2018. 2019 is better. I couldn't find the numbers for that. Now, uh, America's comic book, North American comic sales, and I want to point this out because a lot of the sales are actually coming from manga translated yeah, into English. which is funny because they didn't used to count stuff like that. They didn't, they didn't. used to count uh, crowdfunding. That was like, ha-ha, crowdfunding is a joke. It means you can't get money yourself because you're not good enough. And now they're using that to try to, to boost up their numbers so they don't look like they're, like they're failing as bad as, as they are. They're throwing graphic novels into it. They're throwing manga into it. And so you gotta realize that out of this, you know, billion dollars, 
how much of this are manga sales? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, manga coming over to the States being translated. I mean, it might be a quarter, 30%. I don't know. Um, I know graphic novels are for sure picking up Steam compared to floppy comics. So that's even more sad. Like that $1.2 billion that they did in 2019 included crowdfunding. Okay, which is a, a pretty sizable chunk of it. Did it include everybody's crowdfunding or just specific people's crowdfunding? It included uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So the people they don't like to talk about boosted their numbers. That is true. Yes, uh, probably a couple million dollars just based on, yeah. But manga sales were in there too. And manga is, is blowing up right now. Again, $4 billion a year in Japan, a, a, a country a fraction of the size of the States. Right, and yeah. they're kicking your ass. Yeah, and look at the manga sales growth. Uh, this is from last year. You know, manga subcategory went up 16% last year. Graphic novels only went up five, US graphic novels. So again, manga is coming over here and it's it's eaten into American comics, but they're gonna count it toward American comics bottom line, which is so right, funny. Right, they're trying to not... skew it, and but then they try to block it and they complain about it because they know at the end of the day that manga's kicking their butts. But manga's kicking their butts because manga, ha, 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 a lot of times is, is prettier to look at. It's, drawn better it um has better stories people aren't just handed a mantle because they're special because they have a certain checkbox they have to earn a mantle um you know there there's a lot of things that people really really like because they feel like the, the the struggles there and they can relate to it um i know shield here a lot of people can relate to it yep. um you know that's what they're lacking in american comics it, it, it really is and i'm sorry if you don't like it you see some of these people in these art books um these comic books and the art style looks like you know no offense but like a ninth grader drew it and that's kind of insulting to ninth graders and i'm just like how the hell did they get a pro book when they draw like that well, the way it works in Japan is only the best of the best get in and only the people willing to work the hardest stay in. And that is a theme we see, a recurring theme that we see in, in manga, especially shonen manga. You know, we're seeing it with Demon Slayer, which by the way, Demon Slayer is, I believe, the highest selling manga of all time. And it's it's broken records in just a couple of years. Yeah. It's, it's it's really good too. It is very good. I think again, it, another hero's journey. It's not handed to you. Nope. It's visually beautiful. The patterns and the princes on it is, are, are stunning and dynamic, and it's a good story. All the things that we seem to be lacking in American comics lately. Yep. Now this uh, this article was actually sent to me by Black Sage D. A shout out to him. He sends a lot of good stuff. Yeah, he knows how to find the good stuff. Yeah, he good does. Job. He does. So check him out on Twitter. Check him out. On, I think he has his own YouTube channel. If he doesn't, he should absolutely start one. Uh, but they're talking about Kadansha looking for a replacement for Attack on Titan since it ended. Mm -hmm. And what a big deal that this is basically like America's got talent level of, of competition that there's a, a gaping hole now in the manga industry because Attack on Titan made up so much of the, the manga sales. And you know, over there, you have to prove that your story is good, that you, your your art is good, that you can keep up with you can keep up with a, a you know a, a pace for the delivery of your books, yeah. timelines, and everything else. Just saying, well, I'm you know this type of creator, that type of creator, or diversity and inclusion isn't enough to uh, to get your books pushed through. And you know what, people have to be diverse um, in among the people they get through. And but it's based on who can actually accomplish what needs to be accomplished. Does the market want your book? It is a completely blind process. I mean, a lot there was a lot of discussion about whether or not the uh, the manga car behind Shield Hero, or I'm sorry, she was they were light novels, mm -hmm. whether or not it was a, a, a man or a woman, and it didn't come out until later that, that she was female who did the Shield Hero because they're like, well, no woman would say that women lie about not this one would. Yeah, she did, uh, but it doesn't matter. It's basically like it's basically like d does your stuff resonate with your audience or doesn't it? It does it sell or doesn't it? And the way it works over there is, you know, they'll they'll put your stuff in like Shonen Jump or whatever. But if you fizzle out and you're talking these these studios are cranking out, these creators are cranking out like 20, 30 pages a week. Yeah. Now, now a lot of them do have help. We'll talk about you, that. You have yeah. to mention that. They're it's not doing studio. it all themselves. I mean, that. It, but there are a lot of people who do a lot of the work themselves. And you see, and sadly, a lot of instances where people burn out or they end up sick or they die or different things because they're trying to keep up with demand. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard. We, we had the webcomic out. We were doing it sometimes three days a week, full color, uh, well, eight to 15 hours a page. And we worked full time. Yeah. You know, it was it was hard. And I can't imagine doing 30 pages in a week. Um, 
granted you you know you do get some leeway because it's it's black and white i mean coloring can take as long as drawing sometimes so can shading in black and oh, white yeah yeah, yeah. So. but that's what the you know that's what the assistants are for a lot of times they'll do the backgrounds a lot of times the the pages aren't as as detailed as like an american comic they might just be like a headshot i oh, mean the backgrounds yeah. the backgrounds and stuff like that so i mean there's you know yeah you know it's kind of apples and oranges but um the holy grail of of having a manga is to get that anime series because the anime series is like a uh yeah one it's making money as an anime series two it gets more mainstream appeal but it's also a commercial for the manga so yes. so they're talking about how attack on titan when the you know this is what it sold before the anime came out and then once the anime came out mm -hmm. the manga sales skyrocketed and i think that's what happened with demon slayer too demon slayer you didn't I mean, you heard about it, but you didn't really hear about the sales of it until the anime dropped, and all of a sudden it just like it blew up. Yeah. Um, and then you get all the merchandise sales and all that. But this is interesting. This this little bit here is kind of talks about the money that's at stake. Okay. The pressure on Kadansha again to find another you know a replacement basically for Attack on Titan is all the more intense because it coincides with a moment of great opportunity demand for adaptation friendly storylines is higher than ever the result of a fierce fight between Netflix and Hulu to become global leaders in anime streaming which we've said was going to happen for a while yeah but this is also why the west gets their panties in a bunch and why they're trying to censor anime because they start bringing their sensibilities mm -hmm. to it. And remember, you know, notice what they said, adaptation friendly stories. Um, that's why they're like, well, you can't have this kind of manga or that kind of manga because we can't turn it into an anime if it's got lolly stuff in it or whatever. In 2017, Netflix shook up the industry by luring it's a Taiki Sakure away from produ production IG, the studio responsible for Ghost in the Shell. Uh, the first Netflix series was Devilman Crybaby. I heard mixed things about that based on the Kadansha Surrealist manga. Uh, Kadansha and its rivals must do more than simply mine their back catalogs if they're to thrive. Japanese manga publishers receive only a modest share of licensing income. This is this is important. This is why these manga cause become multimillionaires. So for them, the anime serves as a comic book ad. Unlike Marvel and DC, which retain great control over the world's their company artists and writers invent, Japanese comics publishers work in a system that defers to the creator. The author has almost absolute control in Japan, says Jason DeMarco, who's been licensing anime for Turner. Um, that's totally different from U.S. publishing, where it's like, thanks for creating Spider-Man. Now get the F out of yep. here so we can make a lot of money off Spider-Man. It is. This is this is kind of what happened with um, Fruits Basket. Mm -hmm. I the, was going to mention that, but yeah. Oh, okay. Well, no, no, about the fact that sometimes they jump the gun and it, and it doesn't turn out well. Go ahead. Yeah, Fruits Basket, uh, I, I guess they, they worked ahead um, of where they were on the, the manga. Again, I'm like... with Full Metal Alchemist also. Full Metal Alchemist, yeah, they went off the rails with that one. But yeah, they... they she didn't like the ending. The creator didn't like the ending. I don't know her name off the top of my head. But they also left out a lot of details that she put in the, the books to be like, you know, like with the, the, the hat. hat, I know was a big deal for her. And so they basically canceled Fruits Basket back in the 2000s because she wasn't happy with the adaptation. Now, if it were Marvel and DC, they'd, they'd be like, exactly, fuck you. We're going to make more Fruits Basket. Right. We're going to make it up as we yeah, go. Yeah, we'll make it without you. It's ours now. You yeah, it's ours now. Right. Yep. I mean, you heard the stories about what happened with like characters like Superman and stuff in the back in the day yeah. where they tricked him into giving up the rights. Um, now, on the side note, if you haven't seen the new Fruits Basket, I highly recommend it. It is incredibly good and I very much love it. So make sure you go watch that. And it's basically one-to-one -one with the manga. And it's really, really good. Yeah, it, it is good. It I is love good. it. Go watch it. So there's, look, there's big money in it. There's big money in it for creators. But the the downside, the downside is it's hard work. It is very hard. And only the people who work the hardest. Now, I'm not saying everybody keeps this kind of schedule, but only the people that work the hardest tend to uh, go as far. Which we're not really seeing so much in American comics because, uh, to be frank, a lot of these people are spending so much time on Twitter pontificating, I don't understand how they're getting anything done. And that might be why we're getting some of the quality of work that we're getting. Yeah, it's like they wait until they got 30 days to turn in a script. They wait until 28 days into it because they've been they've been spending it all feels their time. Like it. Yeah, they've been spending all their time on Twitter trying to smack down people they don't like or, or keep them out so they can keep their biscuit. Right. Or bitch about politics or whatever they want to do. And then they're two days away from having to turn in a script and they ju they just shit it out. Yeah. But they're rewarded for that. In Japan, it would be like your stuff's not any good get the hell out of here you're done yeah, but be better it, next time but it hurts you that's the thing in japan i th you know i have to wonder if 
there isn't more incentive to do better because there is more of a direct connection between you're not just a sell sword you're not just work for hire it's like literally my livelihood depends on uh how well i do with this book because i own all of this mm -hmm. you know i'm running my own business well, you know, they, all, all they all come this, this article here i'm looking at they all complain about crunch and they crunch with gaming and crunch with whatever and animation and crunch just sucks and we shouldn't have crunch time. You want to hear about crunch? We'll tell you about crunch. Yeah. Go ahead. You can go tell them about crunch. All right. So this, we got a lot of pushback. Uh, actually, the last video we did talking about the Japanese culture and the work ethic. And uh, people were like, well, you know, people are dying in Japan. Well, it's not untrue. It's not untrue. I mean, let's be honest. It's not untrue. But I'm not saying that that's that way you should go. I'm just saying you can do better than what we're doing here. Right, so here's the truth. This is uh, starting off with uh, manga artists. You would think that manga artists would have the best job ever. Passionate individuals doing what they love, telling amazing stories that immerse you in a beautiful fantasy world, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so here we have Oda, the creator of One Piece, one of the most mm -hmm. successful manga and anime of all time, is one of the hardest working men out there and has one of the craziest work schedules around. Here's his daily routine. He wakes up at five and he starts working. He continues working through the day, only taking breaks for things like eating. He goes to bed at two. And actually, Neon can relate to this because he used to go to bed at like one or two in the morning after having to do work full time. And then we had kids and then they were little at the time and then having to do the comic. Um, and I did what I could to help him, but there's a lot I couldn't do. And then you'd have to get up at like six to yeah. go six or seven to go to work. Yeah, but I wanted to do comics, but, uh, you know, comics didn't they didn't pay enough, didn't mm -hmm. pay enough to support family. So you do. What he, you have to I'm do. sure he's making enough money to make it worth it. But still, that's yeah, that's insane. And that's probably with I mean, it could be a number of things. It could be because I know a lot of manga artists don't work quite as ridiculous of hours, but he might be a control freak. A complete control freak. That could be too. And they said this is this is not just over crunch. This is the way he just handles things. Right. But I'm saying people complain about crunch. And I'm not saying they shouldn't complain about crunch. It's ridiculous. But, you know, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. So he works seven times as long as he's sleeping. Uh, that can't be good for him. This is no. not just his work schedule for crunch time in order to meet deadlines. This is his routine for an entire year. In order for Oda to get new weekly chapters of One Piece, right? Again, there are comics over there weekly and it's like 20 or 30 pages a week. Uh, he must first undergo a series of steps to complete just one issue. Here's a breakdown of what he does throughout the week. Monday through Wednesday, lays out and plans a character dialogue. Thursday through Saturday, draws and inks. Sunday, coloring and other tasks. Maybe he gets an extra hour of sleep on Sundays. Who knows? Uh, being a manga artist may seem simple and easy, but in reality, it's a lot of work with tons of hours being put in, all for the sake of our enjoyment as fans. Same for YouTube. It is the same for YouTube. People, you know, they, they joke with us, and I don't really think... You know, we work that crazy hard, but, you know, we do mm. put out, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes you guys don't see, but yeah. not in it's relation not to YouTube. It's not just YouTube. We do a bunch of other stuff, too, and we do a Disney blog, and we do a show for Disney blog, and we do this stuff, and we're trying to get gaming and animation together, and we do yeah, other pitches and things, and we work with other business companies. Business deals behind the scenes. And stuff like and, that. So yeah. we literally work all day. It's yeah. seven days a week. We were just actually today going about how burned out we were and how much we really want a day off. So uh, I understand it. And I totally are, understand it. We've lived it many times. And we're trying to get things set. People are like, when are you going to get back in the comics? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have to hire help. I'm not as young as I used to be. I can't pull all nighters anymore. Uh, I just can't do it. But yeah, YouTubers, I mean, they work. You see his game YouTubers and people are like, oh, that must be fun. They're just playing video games all day. It's like you don't see all the other stuff that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people in PewDiePie, he was working pretty much around the clock. Yeah. You know, um, but that's that's what you have to do. We ran into it with web comics too. People are like, we want more, we want more, we want more. And grind, it's like what you grind, don't grind, see is yeah. it takes like eight to, to 15 hours a page and then working the job too because quite frankly we're getting paid to do the comic so you know oh you have to God. make money somewhere i used and to the get demands are ridiculous i used to get so pissed i mean that's that's one thing we would really have to reevaluate is is the web comic business model um web comics readers are they're not paying for anything and they're so demanding and it that actually I'll, I'll tell you the truth at first it was really cool it was like oh my god we're getting all these people who love our stuff and we got to a point where we were getting like a million views yeah, a month hundreds of thousands you know and that was back on our own site not even well, part that was of on the, keen spot i think too was it yeah it was on keen spot but it wasn't like we were part of like webtoon or something like no. that that was back when everybody kind of ran their own site and um you know, but then it got to a point where it went from like, oh, this is awesome. People are, are really liking our stuff, whatever. And then it, it, it started to become more demanding. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, you took a week off. How very dare you? My 
I am so disappointed. You should work harder. I liked when we tried to take color away because we're like, well, if we can be black and white, we can get the story out faster. I don't No, I want color. I'm like, well, we want that life. So, yeah. You know, and so. I just got to the point where we just put the comic on hiatus because I'm like, fuck you, people. You're not paying and you're you're being awfully pissy and demanding. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to bring the comic back. We're going to do some other stuff, but we have to figure out how to make it uh, worth feasible, feasible, financially feasible, because, again, we're not teenagers just doing this for fun like we got you got the life and if we're gonna kids at the time yeah if you're gonna take time away from your family that's got to be worth it financially that's gonna do shows at the time too oh my god we're We're doing conventions every weekend yeah there was was, shows all the time i missed my daughter's birthday i cried and cried and cried because we had to miss her birthday once to do a show went to baltimore and i cried like i kept Um, crying because i missed my daughter the only time i ever missed my kid's birthday and we went home that night but i was so upset i missed her birthday we yeah, I mean that's that's the, that was the thing too. So worked a, worked a day job, drew the comics in the evenings into the early morning hours, and then we did conventions pretty much every weekend. We did that for years, and you want to talk about burnout? You know, it, yeah. But you know, the Western comic book artists today seem to think that they should just be handed. Mm-hmm. Handed. Uh, well, even the characters are just handed things anymore. They're handed the mantle. It's almost like they're living by like they don't know. Well, you have to write what you know, and if you don't know struggle, how can you write it? Right. You don't see these characters coming into their own and earning it. It's basically somebody else already did the work for me, but they're handing it to me because I was there and I was... I somehow deserved it for some reason. I deserved it. Now it's my time to shine. It's like, no, you shine after you shine some shoes. And what always always kills (laughs) me about this is it's their time to shine, and then they completely disregard and disrespect the original creators, the original franchise. We saw it with She-Ra. She-Ra. Um, you example, know, but, yeah. Thundercats. They completely disregard everybody who busted their ass and actually earned it. Um, they're just appropriating it. And then they throw shade at the people who actually did the damn work to begin with. And that is that is a huge problem. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge problem. And then if you don't work for it, you don't appreciate respect it. it. You don't appreciate it. And then to, to throw shade at the people who actually worked for it, uh, your predecessors or whatever. It's one of the most vile things you can do because that person actually worked for it. Uh, they blazed the trail. You just walked the path that they had already, mm-hmm. uh, you know, paved the, the way for for you, and you couldn't even show them basic respect. But yeah, De- uh, Demon Slayer, sixty million copies, sixty million copies in twenty twenty. In twenty twenty, yeah. Is that it was the best thing? Is that that it, was it twenty twenty? Because it said is that for in twenty twenty. Uh, of the series. So as of this year, it has sold 60 million copies. I heard it was actually more than that. Somebody told me it was like 70 or 80 million now. It's just, it's racking up. And the thing is, is... But it hasn't been out that long. No, the anime, it's been out for like, well, in Japan, it's been out for speaking, four or five years. Yeah. But the anime just came to the States, I think last year. But you have to understand too, the animes and, and, and mangas that have been out for decades are still selling. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah, people are still buying the very first volume of Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. You know, it still makes money. It, it's like it's like publishing, traditional publishing, where it's going to sell They're forever. Everything. And, um, you know, this is why they, they, you know, people are like, why they keep going back to the well with Dragon Ball. I'm like, well, every time they have a new Dragon Ball series, they got new manga they can sell. They got new merch they can sell and they can go back. And, Sailor Moon, too. Yeah, and Sailor Moon. They and can I go, will be there to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they can sell they can sell the hell out of the original manga for years, you know. It's evergreen, but that's what they're, you know, Kadansha's kind of looking at. They're like, well, we don't have Attack on Titan anymore, so we gotta, gotta fill the hole, gotta fill it. But um, they're just talking about how much work, how much work it is to be a manga artist. Yeah. Here, here it's are schedules. Um, this is for which creator is this? This is a uh, Shibashi Hiroshi. Uh, scheduled during an unspecified week. I'm not sure who that is exactly. Now, you, know, you notice, too, that they do most everything themselves. I mean, they have teams, but, you know, they, they, they know how to handle every aspect themselves, which is one thing I thought was interesting about webcomics. A lot of webcomicers handle everything themselves, yeah. as opposed to these people in the mainstream who they ha- everybody has different jobs. So you might only have to do one part of the job. And the writer's going to get a lot. It can do, like, several books at a time it takes an artist to pencil one. Yeah, that's the thing too that, that kind of makes me mad because the, the the writers now, and no offense, but the writers kind of. Oh, I'm not offended. It's true. Uh, it used to be that the artists kind of carried the book a lot of times. Now it's you know you have the writers out there strutting. It's like okay, great, you can write five books, you can go get Hollywood deals and whatever. 
I'm chained to just drawing one book because it takes so much time, you know? So yeah, the writers have kind of pulled ahead, I think, in terms mm -hmm. of visibility because they can do so much more. I agree. Not that writing is easy, but no, I think it's the not... story oftentimes carries something over the art. No yeah. offense. Yeah. It, uh, well, no, no, no. It does. It does. <laughs> like, no offense. No offense. No, no, no. I'm just saying writers, though, and they don't a, a lot of the comic book writers now don't seem to understand that that like you can you can just type out a page like I want a huge space battle with 99 different kinds of spaceships and all this stuff and whatever. And da, 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 da. OK, here, do it. And then they're like, OK, that's going to take me like three full work days to do yeah. this. It's like, oh, that's OK. I got to go write some other books and get paid for that. too. Yeah, I like how <laughs> they give themselves like three hours of free time in the whole week. And I, I got to tell you, uh, when you when you do this like this and we've been there, you free time. What is that? Yeah, and especially if you have kids, especially if you you're have married, because you, you should be spending your free time with your family. So but look, it's hard work. The Japanese get it. And do people overwork? Yeah. But I also think American comics creators are pussies compared to the Japanese comics creators. Not everybody, but just in general, this attitude that comics should not be a meritocracy shows you just how much of a pussy you actually are. Um, and you've even got Eric Larson saying, hey, if you're if you're good you should be able to break in mm -hmm. so don't be a pussy don't be a comics pussy that's an insulting to pussies pussies are people too pussies take a pounding <laughs> anyway um but look at look at here's here's the market share us anime <laughs> market size we're at 2020 and look where it's gonna be and you know what uh these people are working hard they're kicking your ass they're coming over here and they're cutting into the american comic book market uh, they're coming and you guys just aren't willing you're to gonna work. be losing more and more every day while you're on twitter campaigning for the next election they're taking your you're taking your cookies everybody's laughing about my cookie fetish yeah i do like cookies but yeah it's it's not going to reverse and and what's going to be funny is that we're going to have all these comic book pundits be like look everybody comics are fine it's like no a big chunk of this is uh coming from japan it's coming from japan mm -hmm. because you guys are like you know comics shouldn't be a meritocracy uh, they're coming and eventually all comics yeah, the kids are reading. I know our kids, they, they read mostly manga and graphic novels. I was going to say, but are these graphic novels are talking about like the, the, the middle grade ones yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And those things are selling like hotcakes, um, through book orders and stuff like that. So I'm sure they take a large hunk of that as well. Yeah. Well, no, they're just talking just manga compared to. No, no. I mean, in, oh, the, in yeah. the overall number. Yeah. Yeah. Overall. Well, that's, that's it. Like if you took away the scholastic books and you took away the crowdfunding and took away the manga it would probably be less than half. It would be really sad. It would be like down here. Abysmal. And everybody would be like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, but they don't want to admit that. So we got to try to, to, to massage the numbers in some way. Prop it up. Um, and the reason they're doing this, I think, is to justify the continued existence of the direct market. But and manga is nobody's prop. Nope. Nope. Manga. Manga earns it. And if you're going to if you're going to make comics, if you're going to make manga, you're going to have to work your ass off. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you go. All yep. right. Going to wrap it up. Yeah. OK, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants. And we'll talk later. Bye. Hey, guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.